Steve Gamash here with another Chef Knives to Go Quick Look product review. This time we're looking at the Goko White's number one a Nechiji Santoku 165mm knife. This line of knives has a core steel of Shidogami or White Paper number one Hitachi Reactive Carbon Steel. The heat treats a rather conservative 60 Rockwell on that core steel, which is nice. Gives you a little bit of forgiveness over a knife with harder steel. The, um, these are a nice line for people maybe getting into kind of handcrafted Japanese knives. Uh, the construction is a kind of a softer stainless steel cladding over the top of that core steel. So the core steel is reactive at the edge, but the cladding is stainless for a little bit easier maintenance. And uh, so we've got a three layer sandwich there. And this core steel, we'll get a close up look at it, it has what's known as a Nishiji or a pear skin, kind of a modeled finish to it. The weight on this particular knife, and these weights and dimensions will vary from knife to knife since they're hand hammered. The weight on this one is 131 grams, 4.6 ounces. The edge length is right at 165 millimeters, and the overall length is about 12.5. And I measure my edge length from tip to chin on the actual blade curve. The spine thickness coming out of the handle is about 3 millimeters, and then it tapers down off that to 2-ish or so. And then not a lot of distal taper after that. You do taper down at the very tip via the somewhat generous grind towards the tip. So the tip actually works quite well through soft product. The blade height, this one's um, about 51 millimeters, so fairly tall. Again, these, these can vary. Um, the handle is a newer style handle on these uh, knives from Chef Knives Ago, and it's an octagonal um, walnut black packwood ferrule handle. Fit and finish is pretty good on the handle. I've got a little bit of a bump there where the wood meets the, the, the two woods meet. But it's not bad, and uh, you know it feels got a nice feel to it. This particular one is three inches, excuse me, three inches in circumference, right where the ferrule and the handle meet. And um, the install on this, we'll get a close up look at it. The install on this, you might want to seal it a little bit. I've kind of seen it with these newer handles. They've got bits of gaps and stuff um, where the handle install is. So to avoid water getting in there, you may want to seal that with some beeswax or some epoxy of some kind just to make that water waterproof that junction so here is a close-up look at the blade and you'll see they've got some hand chiseled kanji and here is the nishiji or pear skin type modeled finish on the sides of the blade so i'd call this kind of a refined rustic look you can see the core steel showing through at the very edge and you can definitely see where the grind of the blade starts so from the blade main flats of the blade where the grind of the steel starts towards the edge so there's the shape of the blade called the geometry and you get a pretty generous showing a core steel there at the edge these are ground fairly thin at the edge they're not super thick these are nice performing knives they are no slouches this particular one has a Pretty nice out-of-the-box edge, a fairly generous edge bevel, uh, well done, nicely polished. I'll give it a good 6 out of 10, and uh, I put it on a strop, and after a few strops, this baby turned into a lightsaber. It was really nicely sharp. The um, Who knows, maybe the blacksmiths in Japan say, may the forge be with you. <laughs> but anyway, so the... Um, Fit and finish is pretty good on the blade. As I said, it's a little bit rustic, but you've got nice um, finish on the spine and then some relief on the choil into the neck. So it's pretty comfortable right out of the box. There's really no finish work I'd say you'd have to do to it. And before we put it on our cutting board, uh, balance point. These are different handles. They're slightly heavier, I think, than the other ones. But there's your balance point on this one, which is a little bit behind a pin strip for me. You do have actually a nice spot on this particular handle install. And again, that can vary too. But this one's got a nice little uh, spot for your finger to drop in real comfortable for a pin strip. And the neck is not too wide on these. You've got loads of board clearance here. I think I mentioned performance is really quite good on this knife. It's um, got a fairly flat profile and, and quite the drop on the point. You'll see the point is nowhere near you know, up the blade like a lot of knives. You'll see more of a curve and belly and the point's way up here. This one's way down low. So it's a little different style, but it is definitely flat. It's got a pretty nice smooth curve to the edge profile 
Um, there's not a lot of true flat, but overall it's fairly flat. You definitely don't see much belly towards the tip, which means I'm not going to get real far up on that thing before I start digging that tip in. Again, every knife will be a little bit different, but that's the characteristic of this particular one. So kind of just a very shallow, gentle belly throughout on this one. A little different than uh, a lot of Santoku knives. So, again, performance is quite good. Uh, this is a nice kind of handcrafted knife with uh, a lot of character that's not super expensive. And uh, the steel sharpens up crazy sharp. It's just uh, wicked sharp and makes you feel like a sharpening guru um, to start out the bat. There's nothing that's quite as easy to sharpen as a good Shidogami number no. 1 Hitachi steel. So there you have... An excellent Santoku. Uh, this is the Goko Shidogami number no. one, Nashiji uh, 165 millimeter.